Hi, welcome to PredictNow.ai, a no-code financial machine learning software as a service. As you might have heard, PredictNow helps quantitative and discretionary traders improve their capital allocation by providing a machine learning suite specifically tuned to analyzing financial data. In this video, you're going to learn how to use the platform. In a few moments, you will see a live demo by Dr. Radu Sobano taken from our webinar on cluster-based feature selection. But before that, let's go over the agenda. First, we're going to discuss some of the relevant terms you should understand. If you don't get it all, that's okay, because we're then going to talk about how you can create a free account on predictnow.ai today for a one-month trial so you can play around with the tools that we're using in the video and also get access to our four-hour course. Then we'll look at the webinar where Radu will show us how to use the service. Radu shows how to upload the training and the live data. He'll also review the format of the data so that it's clear, and you'll see where you can download it for yourself. Model parameters include the inputs you can select, like whether your data is under time series format, whether it's a classification or a regression problem, and what kind of feature selection you want to use, to mention just a few. Training a new model will show how to use the machine learning tool for yourself. An overview of the performance metrics, like the F1 score, the AUC score, and the accuracy scores are also presented. The outputs that you can get from Predict Now are explained, which you can then use for your continuing analysis. And then lastly, Radu discusses the new cluster-based feature selection. Let's review some nomenclature. A feature is a variable, and in the example dataset Radu will explore, you can think of each column as a feature. A target is just a feature you want to predict, and usually has something to do with returns. Feature selection algorithms are built into the PredictNow.ai engine and have the job of finding the most useful features in your dataset to use to train your model. This is taken care of by the software. While they're influenced by the random seed that's used to generate them, which sometimes gives different results, PredictNow has had great success in adding cluster-based feature selection, which you have access to as a user, and which rectifies some of the shortcomings of ordinary feature selection algorithms, as will be discussed by Radu. PredictNow's website includes lots of informational resources about all of these things, which, as mentioned, you will get access to when you create your free account, which we'll do now. So let's find out how to create our free account. The first thing that you do is you go to predictnow.ai. You can see right on the landing page, you've got this option to try it for free. Click on that. And you can see you put in your username, you enter your email address and create a password, and you get your one month free trial. Uh, you can also get access to this webinar, which is good because it goes into even more detail. And that's it. You just press submit. Now we're going to go to Radu and he's going to show us how to use the actual service. Good evening and uh, good afternoon. Uh, so my name is Radu and uh, now I want to uh, show um, the cap capabilities of the platform that we have. Uh, so once you registered via um, uh, our website with a uh, uh, free one month free trial you will reach this uh, dashboard in which uh, you have uh, two modes for uh, doing machine learning one is the train mode and one is the live mode now in the train mode uh, you construct a machine learning model using some uh, input historical data and in the live mode you will construct uh, uh, predictions, you will have predictions on new data. Now, uh, first of all, we don't have a model train yet, so we will create a new one. So I will click on the train mode. And now you need to upload the data set. So uh, as Ernie uh, suggested previously, we are going to use uh, the, for this demo, we are going to use the S&P 500 monthly returns data set which will be available on the, in the dashboard uh, after this webinar uh, for you to try it. Uh, the data set is ranged from uh, January 1945 up to uh, November 2019. And uh, in the returns column here, you can observe two classes, zero and one. 
A zero class occurs whenever the future monthly return is negative or zero. So we label it as a zero. Whereas a one class occurs whenever the future monthly return is strictly positive. So for instance, in this one, uh, it, in uh, November 1945, uh, it, it is indeed the case that the future one month return will be uh, strictly positive. Now, the following columns uh, includes both fundamental and technical macroeconomical indicators. And uh, first of all, I want to uh, point out where do the feature come from. And this feature, uh, for a better explanation of these features, please consult this paper. It is called a comprehensive look at the empirical performance of equity premium prediction. But just as an overview, we include dividend price ratio, dividend in yields, earning price ratio, dividend payout rate, stock variance, uh, uh, treasury bill rates, etc. So now uh, the idea is you are constructing a machine learning model, a supervised uh, machine learning model using these features, which uh, might be included in both fundamental and uh, technical uh, macroeconomical uh, indicators. And uh, we, ha we will have the returns as a uh, date, uh, uh, as a target variable. So now let me just upload it and click on the next. Let me go to Okay. And after you have click on next, uh, you will have a form to complete for uh, constructing a machine learning model. Basically, you as a user uh, can customize uh, it using different options, can customize the training. So first of all, you will need to input the name of the data target variable. In this case, this is, uh, uh, it's called uh, returns, right? Uh, now you see here that the data file is under time series format. So I will click on yes. If you leave the option uh, set to yes, you will uh, make the feature stationary using the technique of uh, uh, fractional differentiation, which was popularized by Dr. Marcos Lopez de Prado. Uh, the target variable is under class format, since what you are what you are uh, trying to predict are two two classes. So this problem is considered as a binary classification problem, but in, uh, we also allow multi-class classification and regression problems. And uh, uh, the feature selection algorithm that uh, we want to choose uh, for this uh, presentation would be cluster MDA. Uh, and for speed purposes, I will leave the level of machine learning hyperparameter optimization set to none meaning that the model will be trained using uh, some uh, default values uh, uh, that are found in, the, in our user manual. So we don't actually do, for, for this run, we don't actually do the hyperparameter optimization step. Uh, the size of the test set, I will deliberately put it as uh, 6% meaning that the first 94% will be less, will be kept for training, whereas the last 6% of uh, data will be uh, uh, kept for uh, out of sample uh, predictions. Now, the reason for using this is because that will correspond to the 2016 up to 2019 uh, data, uh, which will be used for out of sample testing. Uh, the type of ensemble, I release the type of ensemble learning uh, to the gradient boosted decision tree algorithm. Uh, sample weights, probability calibration uh, are uh, different uh, techniques that are used uh, that you might choose uh, to customize your model. But for this demo, I will leave it as uh, the default values. I suggest to use the exploratory data analysis. Uh, because this will allow you to find any outliers or errors in your input data. 
And in the file suffix name uh, 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 box, you just need to uh, fill in uh, a name for your machine learning model. So I will do just that. Okay, so once you are satisfied with it, uh, then you can click on run model. And you see here that now it's performing the cluster MDA step. Okay. Uh, now, once you have uh, obtained the results, so uh, if someone is interested in the size of the data set, uh, I forgot to add that uh, this data set is about uh, 900 rows and uh, three, uh, four, about 40, 14, uh, 14 columns, right? So this is a public data set. So once you have received the, the, the results thing, you, you will receive it either uh, both via the uh, email that you provided for registration to, as a, uh, at the registration step, or, and you have it in, uh, in your browser. So once you click on that, you see here uh, the, the results page uh, uh, section. And in the results page section, uh, you see uh, information about both in sample and out of sample data. Uh, since it's a public classification data set, the predictive power is not great. You will see here that it's still better than random. Uh, but specifically for uh, the test set, right, uh, which is ranged from uh, mid 2015 up to uh, November 2019, uh, indeed the accuracy is uh, superior, but uh, uh, the AUC score, so uh, we offer three performance metrics at the moment, uh, the accuracy, the F1 score, and the AUC score. And uh, both, uh, all the performance metrics will need to be taken into account when the, deciding when the, the model uh, is uh, appropriate to actually be used in live trading. So uh, for the test set, uh, although the accuracy is good for finance, usually uh, uh, an accuracy greater than 55% is uh, decent for uh, finance. Uh, you will observe here that the AUC score is uh, less than 0 0.5, i.e. the under under curve score is, uh, is uh, uh, quite inferior. So we cannot conclude that the model trained using the, uh, uh, this SPX uh, public data set is actually so something that you would use for live trading. But nevertheless, uh, I want to show uh, the output of what you can get from this, uh, uh, from this platform. So I want to point out that uh, a good model is also constructing using good features. So if your features that don't have predictive power, then indeed your performance metrics will not be the best. Now I want to go to the uh, resources here. So first of all, uh, you have some simple information about, um, uh, <clears throat> sorry, you have a simple, uh, you have some simple statistics about your uh, input data set, such as mean, standard deviation, minimum and maximum, and percentiles for every column in your input data set. Now I want to briefly go to uh, the other outputs, all right, such as the cluster output. So as Ernie mentioned, uh, for this public classification data set, uh, you have two clusters, one with important score of 0 0.66 over uh, 0 0.66, and another cluster which has um, an important score of 0 0.33. So uh, the, the feature are uh, split into clearly defined clusters, uh, as and in the paper uh, that uh, Ernie and Nancy has, uh, have written, uh, they point out that the first cluster is referring to more fundamental indicators and the second cluster is related to more technical indicators such that uh, stock variance, 
uh, and uh, other things. Um, and now I want to show you the feature selection list. So in the feature selection list, what, what do you get as output? So there are 10 features, right, which will be selected. Uh, and these features, uh, okay, you might, uh, uh, why, might want to ask how are these features uh, selected, right? So uh, first of all, uh, you look at the cluster importance scores, right? And uh, you take the features from that respective clusters whose cluster importance score are higher than the average, right? So in this case, the first cluster will be selected and all the uh, features inside of that cluster will be used uh, for training the machine learning model, okay? Uh, I will briefly go to the other output. So the, the performance metrics file in the performance metrics file is uh, used uh, just uh, for convenience. So the per in the performance metric file, you just get this uh, simple information that is uh, displayed here, but you might want to download your uh, files at a certain point. And you might want to uh, compare your, uh, uh, the performance of your models and the predictions uh, offline. So this, is, this might come in handy. Um, I will go to the actual, the actual predictions now. I want to go to the out of sample ones uh, first, uh, since we don't have much time and I want to show uh, as many as, as much as possible. So regarding the predicted targets, right? What are the predicted targets? Basically, these are the labels that are going to get uh, predicted by the model. So you get a simple uh, CSV file like this, in the sense uh, you have one column with, uh, with, uh, with, the, with the corresponding months. And now you will have two columns. One, one is the true target and uh, one is the predicted target in the true target are actual values. Uh, there are, these are the actual labels from your input data frame. Whereas the predicted target, these are the classes which are uh, offered by your uh, predictive model. So you see here, uh, some, of, some of the months, uh, the model got it right in some, oh, oh no, actually in the, in the test set, most cases, the model has, has taken it correctly, but I will take, since the AUC score is not superior, that would mean that this result will be taken with a grain of salt because we know that in this, this regime, it had been a bull market. So most of the predictions will be labeled as one. Okay. Uh, and regarding predicted, por predicted probabilities, I think that would be a... Uh, uh, that might come handy because, uh, first of all, you might want to use the predictions per se, zero or one, profitable or unprofitable. But the idea is, uh, since you might not like a black box model, you might want to look into the actual probabilities that the model uh, output. So you um, might use this... Uh, uh, machine learning model uh, techniques uh, to uh, size your trades. So you might want to look into uh, using it as a risk management layer. So for instance, if uh, you, uh, your model tells you that there is about 60% six, uh, 60 uh, uh, chance of your trade being profitable, you might size your capital accordingly or you might also have it uh, as a threshold saying, okay, I'm not going to trade anything unless it's great, unless the predict, uh, uh, the, the, the model tells me that the trade is going to, to be profitable with more than 65%. So you might use it for, for different use cases. Okay. Uh, now I want to very briefly show you the live mode. So in the live mode, you perform new predictions for new data. So uh, now I want to uh, download the model file. Yeah. Now I, I will go back to the main dashboard and click on the live mode. Okay. And in the live mode, I need to upload the, 
an, uh, a live data set. Now, how, how does the live data set looks like? It is, you might use, use it differently, but usually in practice, it is you're training a model using historical data and then uh, you decide whether, whether you trade or not. So in this case, for December 2019, I'm trying to predict whether the uh, January, so at the end of December 2019, I want to predict whether the January uh, monthly return will be po uh, positive or not. Now, you see the format here is uh, uh, consistent to the format of uh, your input data set. Of course, uh, the values will differ, of course, but uh, you will see here that the returns column had been left empty, meaning that you don't know in advance whether uh, your trade is going to be profitable. Okay. And once you, so first of all, let me, let me choose that. Uh, I think this one here. Okay. And now you need to upload your model and uh, let me look at, uh, here, yeah, I think it's this one. Um, let me look, hopefully I didn't get it wrong. Okay, so I think it's this one. Okay, so I'm going to click on predict. And indeed you, the, as output, you get uh, uh, two CSV files. The first, in the first CSV file, you have the predicted targets, right? So for this, uh, for this month, right? Uh, at the end of December, I want to see whether at the end of January, the returns, uh, the, the monthly return is positive or not. And in this case, it said, yeah, it's positive. Okay. So I might trade on that. Now, uh, in terms of predicted probabilities, again, uh, if you look at the confidence that the model has in this prediction, it says, oh, over 90% uh, chance of your model being uh, profitable, of, your, uh, of the returns uh, being strictly positive. And with that, I will conclude this demo. A few closing notes. As discussed, Predict Now's most intended use case is as a risk management tool to be used to enhance your existing trading strategies. There is also a premium subscription available, which includes dedicated consulting hours to help you set up and integrate Predict Now. As a separate service, feature engineering services are provided, as well as API you can make calls to in whatever programming language you use. Finally, there is a Slack channel that you will get access to, which you can ask questions to the team themselves. Thank you for your time.